Testing, testing, one, two, and the trois, Ichinisan. All right, I think we're live. Yes, we are. Hi, guys, welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse, of course. Now, today, very exciting video, as always, as we're going to be talking about Pimax, who have unveiled very recently, or announced very recently, a brand new VR headset that looks whew, like a little, little beauty. The first guys, I have been testing out the Pico Neo 3 Link. Thank you again, Pico, for sending us this headset. Today, I did a little bit of tribe just to go and test it out. The DJ app in VR looks absolutely amazing. Now, there are little things here and there, but I will reveal more information, of course, this weekend. So do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you don't miss that video. All right. And by the way, we are doing an awesome giveaway, guys. We we're giving away a brand new HP Reverb G2 just behind me there and also a pair of Sabre shoes with the gaming station the carpet, the chair, and everything that goes with it. And a third lucky winner will walk away with a voucher worth 50 US dollars, which you can redeem against any VR title on the Pico Store, Meta Store, Oculus Store, Steam VR, or the Vive Port Store. So guys, do make sure to go to the link in the description below after this video to enter free of charge. All right, let's transition over to today's story because this is actually really, really cool stuff, guys. And um, yeah, let's let's just talk about Pimax's plans here because they look quite ambitious, I have to admit, but they look pretty awesome. Pimax today announced, well, it was yesterday, the Pimax Crystal, a new headset that broadly similar to the company's upcoming Pimax 12K QLED, LED, sorry, headset, but with a few features powered back and a reduced price. So basically they're gonna take a few things off and the price is also going to be reduced, but the price, I mean, let's talk about this in just a moment. Though the price is low at 1900 US dollars, it still puts the headset well into the ultra enthusiast category, positioning it as direct competitor to Varshaw Aero's headset. Just half a year before it's set to launch its flagship Pimax 12K QLED headset, Pimax today introduced another similar headset, which it says will launch in Q3, just a few months before the 12K QLED. So Q3 this year, guys, this is 2022, not 2023. So this is very exciting. Uh, Pimax Crystal has many of the same ambitious features, standalone processing with PC compatibility, eye tracking, ultra high resolution, support for Ygig wireless module, high refresh rate, inside out tracking, and more. What well, sets it apart from its more expensive sibling is that a somewhat lower resolution and a lower field of view. While the 2400 Pimax 12K QLED sorry, aims for an ultra high resolution and an ultra wide 240 degrees diagonal field of view, that is just crazy guys. Pimax crystal lower both but claims to maintain a very high 42 PPD with a 120 diagonal field of view, which is again, much more than what is available today, but we'll talk about this in just a moment, and 35 PPD with a 140 degree field of view. The choice is up to the user, thanks to interchangeable lenses, one of the headsets, unique, 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 sorry, Unix, Unix, unique features. Um, so basically, it's looking to compete directly with the Varjo Ultra Enthusiast Aero headset, which is priced at US dollars but doesn't include controllers or require track and base stations. However, on the other hand, Pimax says the Crystal will include headset track controllers and inside-out tracking out of the box at $1,900. An optional 200 Steam VR tracking faceplate will be offered at launch, and the, the company sorry, says it's working on a stereo camera faceplate for color pass-through for mixed reality. Now, guys, this is absolutely amazing. What I want to say about this is, first of all, now, can they compete against Vajo? Is it going to be the same market? Pimax are more consumer driven. Varsho is more enterprise driven. If we look at basically Varsho's website, I just want to put things in perspective, guys, all right? First thing is you never know, of course, you never know what's what, but Varsho's relationships, they are building headsets for astronauts who are going to space, guys. They are training astronauts. So are they really going to be able to meet Varsho's expectations in the enterprise market? I really, personally speaking, very much doubt it, simply because Vajo are the creme of the creme when it comes to super high-end 
VR for the enterprise market. They also work with Volvo, they work with VW, they work with Aldi, they work with all the biggest companies in the world when it comes to creating technology for specific case uses, which you can go to the website and check out. And it is absolutely amazing in terms of what these guys have been pioneering over the last few years with all these people within the enterprise market. Pimax, however, have also equally created amazing technology that has transcended the industry, especially for field of view. However, because they are still more or less a startup uh, kind of company, they've had more hiccups than Vajo have, although Vajo are still technically a startup as well, but Vajo are much further down the line in terms of where a startup can be is basically what I'm trying to explain in terms of the level of startups. Vajo's up here, Pimax is still a little bit here because they've had more hiccups in terms of the R&D research and development for some of their technical uh, development when it comes to the technology that they have been releasing. But Pimax have a very good reputation in the industry. Uh, for sure, they have a very good reputation. A lot of people are very happy with their products. And we're all very excited in terms of the products that they are developing at the moment and when they'll be releasing them. Um, so on the consumer front, they are there. But on the enterprise front, I don't think they're there when it, compared to Vajo is my point. However, compared to Pimax, Vajo are not there on the consumer front because of course you don't have the controllers, you need base stations. Va uh, Pimax, what they're really banking on at the moment is the new technology that they're putting inside of their headsets using this crystal uh, technology for the lenses, which is supposed to be revolutionary in terms of both what you can see further away from the actual uh, in the background, for example, when you're doing simulations, you know, you'll see cars in the background, you'll see people in the background, you'll see planes, clouds, buildings, you know, all these kind of things. So they're really banking that this new technology of these lenses that they're using will be able to render the final image much sharper, making you feel that you're really immersed inside of virtual reality as much as you're immersed in the real world, which is really what VR is supposed to be all about. It's supposed to make you feel like you are in the real world, but you are in an alternative universe, an alternative world, as it were, and not so much in a video game because Ultimately, VR is supposed to be not making you feel like you're in a 3D rendered world that is a video game. It's supposed to make you feel like you're there in the real world. The other thing is it's supposed to also render the blacks much sharper. So again, it's a bit like QLED, let's say. Well, it is Q OLED, sorry. Um, you know, so if you're going to play some specifically hyper-realistic VR, like, well, it could be horror, it could also be a real world situation, training staff and all these kind of things, then you really want the blacks to be as black as possible and the brights to be as real as the bright as possible. And of course, you don't want any color bleeding. You want everything to be as sharp as possible, all the colors to be there as you know sharp as possible. So at the end of the day, this is really what they're banking on. And also the fact that you'll be able to change these lenses inside, rendering basically people who have myopia or other forms of, um, you know, not not a lot of, not very good eyesight basically, will enable them to be able to see in VR in a way that currently perhaps is not as possible in your standard, for example, you know, Pico Neo 3 Link, or perhaps your HTC Vive, or, you know, your other VR headsets, or even the HP Reverb G2, even though the HP Reverb G2 is amazing, it's 4K technology. Well, compared to these lenses that they're banking on, it will basically make the HP Reverb G2 have to go and run, you know, a good run for the money, as they say. So this is going to be very interesting. Also, it's the very first time that this will be a inside, inside out tracking technology, where basically means if I just take the Beacon Neo 3 link as an example, you don't need 
base stations, which means things you need to put on the walls in order to run your, your VR headset. Now, having base stations, generally speaking, can also be a good idea because it means you can basically track if you have your hands behind you. But in the previous video, as you saw when I did a test with the actual Pico Neo 3 uh, Link, you, you, I mean, the Pico Leo, Neo 3 Pro, sorry, you could see that even when I put the, 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 the controllers at the back, it was still tracking very well. So inside our tracking technology is now getting to a level where things are actually almost as good as having a base station. But a base station can, as I mentioned, be more of a pro, especially if you're doing, for example, enterprise events at a big trade show and you want everything to be there, you don't want the lights to get in the way and all this kind of stuff, then base station technology could still, could still sorry, provide some good pros there as well. But I'm just saying that inside our technology today, is more than good enough. You don't really need base stations anymore, but you know, old school versus new school, you can test the latter when you receive the headset. It's great that they'll have also a mixed reality plate interchangeable. So if you want to create some apps where you have augmented reality and you want to, 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 to have these experiences where you can see outside of your VR headset, then I think that's great, but it would be great also, it would be even better if Pimax could come up with the technology just like you know the Meta Quest 2 basically, or, or, the, or, or the next Meta uh, headset, the Cambria one, where everything will be in color, or the Lynx R1, sorry, um, you know, where you can basically have everything in built, you don't need to change things. Uh, I see, I, I do see that changing things can be good because it could reduce the cost of the headset, of course, uh, and then if you want the option, then you just pay extra and you have, you know, you can change things. But at the end of the day, if everything was inside, then you know, you're really onto a winner there. So we're very, very excited about this headset. This is a very serious company. Pimax has a great reputation in the market as well. It's not like your other startups which are brand new, like Decker Gear, we don't know who they are, where they are, where the money comes from. Um, you know, they, they, they're kind of gone off the radar. Um, you know, and our power as well, we don't really know who they are. They come up with stuff that doesn't really work properly, or it's kind of broken, or it, the marketing just doesn't, just doesn't fit the actual product, so just be very cautious. But Pimax have proof in the pudding. A lot of people have bought their, their products before, and even though, they, uh, even though, as I mentioned, sorry, they are a startup, they have good reputation, and we're very, very excited about this news, of course. So hopefully Pimax could also send us a headset to test. That would be absolutely fantastic. So do make sure to enable the bell after you subscribe, as who knows, I could also be one of those influencers who potentially could bring you the actual testing of this headset Let's pray for that. That would be really awesome. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. <sighs> very quick update. Really enjoyed spending, enjoyed spending time with you. I will see you in another video very soon over the weekend. Sorry, I'm a bit tired after work, so if I'm sorry my words a little bit or losing my speech a bit, very sorry about that. But I'll see you this weekend with new footage of the Pico Neo 3 link. I'm going to give you all the facts that other influencers have not been giving you over the last few days. So guys, See you very soon. Bye for now. Bye.